Uh, Nimrod, <laughs> give us a sense of where Jordan is at these days. Unlike the political scientist and the journalist, I would be very parochial. Um, and when I look both at uh, Egypt and Jordan, I'm looking at uh, what is Israel's interest and how is it being affected by the neighbors. Um, and I'm uh, astonished to find out back home um, very little appreciation. I'm talking about general public, including media. Very little appreciation of the strategic significance of the relationship with these two countries. Uh, Jordan, I was asked to accentuate Jordan a little more. Um, Jordan has emerged in, in, in the bilateral relations has emerged about a year ago from a terrible decade, a wasted decade in its relationship uh, with Israel. Um, and it's not just the bilateral that is being affected. When Jordan is being challenged in terms of its standing vis-a-vis the Haram Sharif Al-Aqsa Temple Mount, regime legitimacy is being challenged back home. A regime that doesn't have the resources to uh, purchase loyalty, uh, the, a country that is starved for energy, for water, for any resource, basically, um, undermining regime legitimacy uh, in that way uh, is a very risky proposition. And uh, only a year ago, we emerged out of this, and in Amman you could have heard the sigh of relief. Um, and we had several very, very good months. And then something happened. Um, you were all there. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, convergence of the holidays, and once again, uh, we had tension, um, and we had problems, um, and we had very serious protest, almost a crisis, with Jordan, including with His Majesty traveling, uh, calling on, 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 on President Biden, eventually uh, traveling uh, to Washington these days. Um, when you hear the Israeli discourse on the subject, you hear a lot of arrogance and you hear a lot of, we are giving them water, we are giving them natural gas, they better shut up about Temple Mount and all the rest. And here the catch is that Jordan's strategic importance, which is irreplaceable, cannot be uh, overestimated, but cannot be expressed in public. Uh, we have a thing in Israel that when we talk about uh, Israel's uh, yes or no nuclear capability, we say according to foreign sources. We must say, according to foreign sources, so according to foreign sources, Israel's security border is not the old green line, of course, is not the Jordan River separating the West Bank from the East Bank, but Israel's security border is 350 kilometers to the west, to the east, uh, 200 miles to the east, which is Jordan's border with Iraq, and by proxy with Iran. What Israel is able to do on the ground and in the air, according to foreign sources, vis-a-vis -vis Iran proxies in Syria, Iran proxies in uh, Iraq, uh, and Iran directly, uh, is irreplaceable. And the stability of the uh, Hashemite uh, kingdom is an Israeli strategic interest. And yet, the Israeli public hardly have any sense of it and therefore finds any concession that Israel makes to Jordan, not as an investment in Israeli security, but as a leftist, uh, uh, blindly hard liberal uh, concession uh, to that uh, little dictator over there. Uh, lack of understanding. Um, with Egypt, that's not the story. With Egypt, there is greater appreciation, um, even though many would tell you that normalization with Egypt is not what it should have been. Uh, but overall, Israelis are pleased 
that since the signing of the peace treaty, not a single Israeli was wounded or let alone killed as a result of a decision of the Egyptian government. And if trade will, will, will flourish in the next generation, so be it. But there is an appreciation uh, of the importance of the strategic relations between the two countries. And Israelis don't go very, very, very deep beyond that. But what we started to touch upon, and this is where I end, what we started to touch upon between uh, um, uh, FOMO? 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 FOMO. Fear of, <laughs> fear of missing out. FOMO or pioneering, I think there is no the same, it's not the same case with, uh, between uh, Egypt and, and, uh, and uh, Jordan. For Egypt, yes, there is a sense of uh, FOMO. That is to say, Egypt was building its reputation, its standing vis-a-vis -vis the region, as well as in particularly Washington, on the fact that it was the liaison between Israel and the Arab world. I mean, not the exclusive uh, claim to fame, but a major strategic asset was Egypt's wish to serve as that liaison and control the traffic uh, between uh, Israel and, 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 and the, the relevant players on the Arab world. And suddenly we read in the Egyptian press and we hear from friends in Cairo, uh, we paid the price, we were the pioneers, we did it long ago, we paid the price of uh, being castrated by the Arab world um, in, in various, very costly ways, concrete. Uh, and now, suddenly, we are sidelined, we are no longer uh, relevant. So President Sisi has taken a few initiatives of bringing uh, Prime Minister uh, Bennett uh, to Sharm el-Sheikh, and then bringing Bennett with um, um, MBZ uh, to uh, the Saudi, the um, Emirati, Crown Prince, now President, uh, to Sharm el-Sheikh, and then joining the Negev Summit along with others, sort of a message that I'm still relevant uh, even in this new era of Israel's opening with, with, uh, with, with, the, with the Gulfies. Jordan doesn't have the same luxury. Uh, Jordan is not, uh, how did, did you define it, uh, too big to fail and therefore 12 billion uh, are being coughed from, from, the, from the Gulf uh, to, to sustain uh, Egypt. Jordan doesn't get uh, that luxury. Um, and, and therefore is far more dependent on a, a Israeli goodwill um, and on Washington's uh, goodwill uh, than, than Cairo is. <laughs>